Okay, I finished that last one in, in kind of a hurry, so I want to go back and just um, just review with you a little bit of what we were talking about and do another problem like that. Okay, so with Faraday's Law, once again, there are two sides of Faraday's Law. So there's, there's actually the EMF that's induced is um, going to equal the negative derivative of the phi with respect to time, or phi is the magnetic flux with respect to time. And um, that flux is the flux that's enclosed in the loop, if, if you have a loop. And then um, it's also equal to the closed loop integral of E dot DL. Okay, so now um, the E that we're talking about is the E on the Faradian loop on Faradian loop. And the DL, the DLs, they make up the Faradian loop. Let me spell the word Faradian for you. It's like Faraday. Faraday. But, wait, it's Faradian. So there's an I-A-N. Faradian loop. Okay? And so the E is not just the E any place, it's the E on the Faradian loop, and the DLs make up the Faradian loop. For a Faradian loop is just an imaginary loop. It's, it's like a Gaussian surface or an Amperian loop. All those are just imaginary made up so that you can um, do these problems. And the magnetic field, the, the magnetic flux, this magnetic flux is the magnetic flux inside or that passes through the Faradian loop. So that's also the magnetic flux that passes through the Faradian loop. All right, so on that said, let's do one more problem like this. Okay, so here we have um, an area that has some magnetic field, and that's designated by dots, so that means that those arrows are coming out at us. Okay, so the field's coming out at us. This is not a wire. This is just the boundary of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is contained just in this boundary. It's a circular boundary of capital radius R. Uh, of, excuse me, of radius capital R. And so, um, but the B is decreasing with time. So as time goes on, these Bs are disappearing, disappearing, disappearing. Now, um, as I was saying before, if you put a wire here, you're going to induce current in this wire. Now, um, if the, which way will the current go? Let's, let's figure that out. If the dots are decreasing, then it's going to want to keep the status quo, so it's going to want to make dots. And so to make dots, the current will go around like this. So that's also the way of the, mag the electric field. The electric field will be that way too. Now, um, but get rid of this. And there is no current because you need a wire for the current to flow in. But there still is an electric field. And so if I wanted to find the electric field right here, we know it's going to be this way. But let me figure out just how big that field is going to be. So that's the question. Now again, that's not an electrostatic field. That's a, that's a non-electrostatic field. So, um, and I'm going to draw in my Faradian loop. So if you want to find out how big the field is, the first step is you draw a Faradian loop. And the Faradian loops we'll use, it. that's a circle. It's not a sphere, it's a circle, it's just a loop. And um, the DLs that are going to make up this Faradian loop are going to go this way. They're, they're little vectors. There's an infinite amount of them. So they're infinitesimally small. And... Um, they go around the loop like this, and the electric field right here is going to be this way. The electric field this here is going to be that way. The electric field right here will be that way. It's that electric field that causes the EMF that gets induced in the wire, and it's the so it's that electric field that's really pushing those those charges around the wire. Okay, so um, how big is that field then? Um, well, I'm just going to apply Faraday's law. And so um, maybe I'll do that on a separate sheet of paper because I'm going to run out of space on that piece of paper. Okay, so um, let's call this distance out to here. Let's call that lowercase r. That's the distance out to the bigger circle. And um, let, me, let me figure out then just what the field is there. 
Okay, so I write down Faraday's law. So negative d phi dt is equal to the, the closed loop integral of e dot dl. Okay, now the flux that's in there is just going to be the b, let's say the b is known, times the a. Now the a that I want to use is, um, I don't want to overestimate this, the flux. The flux is only contained in the circle of a capital R. It's only contained in there. So when I write down the a, it's going to be pi times capital R squared. Okay, so I, I'm done with that side for until I take the derivative. On this side, I'm going to make the argument again that I can get rid of the dot product. And the argument for that is because E is parallel to DL at all points on the Faradian loop. And then um, the next thing I'm going to say on this side is that I can pull E out of the integral. And the reason I can pull E out of the integral is because E is the same at every point on the Faradian loop. It doesn't change. And, and the argument is an ar argument of symmetry. Why would, why would we expect the field to be bigger here than here than here? After all, I can just turn this and it's the same picture. Okay, so I did that because E is uniform at all points on the Faradian loop. That's an F. Okay, uh, so it turns out then that um, the only thing that's changing is b on this side. So I can pull out the pi r squared. And so um, it's going to be negative pi capital R squared times the derivative of b with respect to t is equal to e dot dl. And now when I add up all these dls, I'm just going to get, when I add up all the dls, as I go around, and, and this is telling me to do that for the entire loop, then that's going to give me 2 pi. Now that's going to be little r. That's going to, it's going to be this distance. So it's 2 pi little r. Okay. So, um... Let me bring, let me get cross out a pi and bring um, the 2r on the other side. So the electric field is going to be this. The electric field is going to be equal to negative. Bringing this on the other side here, you can check my math as I go. So it's going to be. Um, a negative r squared db dt all over 2r. Now these are, that's a constant. Let's say that the rate at which the db is changing with time is a constant. Let's just say that it's changing at a constant rate. So what this is saying is as I go out, the r gets less and less and less. So the r is dropping off. So like right here, let's say the E is this size. But if I go twice as far away, like out here, does that look about twice as far away? Okay, twice as far away, the E will get to be twice as less. It'll only be half. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's a 1 over R relationship. So if I double this, then it's I'm halving the E. Okay. So it looks like the E, as you go out, gets less and less and less. But inside here, the E actually gets more and more and more. So as you go out, I'll put it on this side. It's, it, as, it, as you go out, it grows, 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 and then it starts to drop off.
Okay, bye.